All right, we're finally ready to get started. Welcome to another Polynerix play stream of Fire Pro Wrestling World, my fictional Polynerix Pro Wrestling League, where I do my fantasy booking, put together a card, we stream the entire card in one go. Uh, this will be going up on Sunday afternoon on the YouTube channel and Pinerk.com. It's not a lazy weekend. I uh, want to take a break from that new Call of Duty that's out and just chill for a little bit, get through this card, relax for a while, and then get back into the high-stress world of Call of Duty Black Ops 4 Blackout. So let's get into it. First match, Fatal 4-Way, one pinfall for the women's title. Mandy Leon, still the champ, going up against Tegan Knox, Victoria, and forgive me if I mispronounce this, but Io Shirai. Let's get into it. I'm very tired. I've been up for 25 hours at this point. I'm trying to make it all the way through to the evening so I can go to bed. So bear with me if I start to nod off, mumble, or make no sense. Fight. I'm bound to determine to get this belt off uh, Manny Leo, but I'm doing it honestly. I'm not gonna uh, do the match or you know take control of her and have her get pinned. So at some point, the AI will take the belt off of her. Got another 11 match card in store for you. Another 11 matches, another 11 titles. All of the belts that are in the game, the ones from New Japan and my personal created ones. Just like the last several cards. We're going to mix it up later in the week, though. Later in the week, we're going to do a special show that will only have six matches. It will only be the singles titles. And that will be called Triple, Th Triple Threat Thursday. Every match on that card, every singles title, with the exception of the hardcore title, because it can't be defended that way, will be a Triple Threat Rules elimination style match so all the titles all my singles titles that's you know the women's title the junior heavyweight title the never open weight title all of them all the way up to the big one will be defended under triple threat elimination rules so look forward to that on thursday it'll be part of my week of bachelorhood as my girlfriend is out of town on vacation with her best friend and outside of work, I've got time to fill. Who knows how much time? Uh, I talked about on the podcast Saturday morning that um, you know there's been some staffing changes at work. I am not sure how that's going to affect my free time this week. I'm not sure how many hours of overtime I'm going to have to work. You know, I, I figured it up last night while I was at work that I have worked a hundred hours in the last two weeks. Which, you know, doesn't sound like a lot, you know, when you think about it over the course of 10 days, but that's, you know, I, I averaged, uh, I had three 12s last week and two 12s this week, so, you know, five of the last 10 days of work have been 12-hour shifts. It's been exhausting, and there's more to come in the next two weeks. I don't know how badly it's going to fuck with my personal life, but we'll make it work, you know. My free time will be my free time. I have a birthday party to go to tomorrow afternoon, which is part of the reason why I'm staying. I'm trying to do my best to stay up all day today. Uh, when we get back from that, we're going to hit that Black Ops hard again. I played the hell out of it this morning. Played about four or five hours of it. Really enjoying it. Um, probably going to record the play test on Sunday. Full disclosure, obviously I'm recording this on Saturday evening. Um, it'll be posted on Sunday. 
I kind of like doing that this way. Uh, we have a big announcement coming Tuesday. Stay tuned to PlyNerd.com for that. A big announcement about PlyNerd Pro Wrestling. Um, stuff we've got coming up. If you listen to the Ordinary Podcast this weekend, you already heard the announcement. But uh, at least the, the tease of it. If you go to PlyNerd.com on Tuesday, I think around noon is when I have the post set to, to, to drop. You'll see the announcement of uh, what I'm doing next with this silly little show here. Somebody's gotta, somebody's gotta take the belt off Mandy. So if the belt doesn't come off her in the next couple shows, I'm gonna put her against seven people. Okay, she has just beat all comers. Everybody that's gone against her, she's she's taken down. And a couple multi-person matches too. Of course. Last episode I did of this is the one I effed up and forgot to make it a title match. She won the match, but it doesn't count towards her defense total. Somebody to take the belt off of her. That's what I want. Oh, come on. Kind of pulling for Tegan. Apparently she's winded though. She stopped to stop to breathe mid run. Mandy keeps breaking it up. Try to drink an energy drink to wake my ass up for the remainder of this card. Pretty bad first match. I'm zoning out. It's going to be a long show, folks. But I got to do it. Got to get this done. Yeah, this is for fun. This is silly and pointless. And... Oh, man. I held my breath there. I thought Mandy was going to pull it out again. Again, forgive me if I mispronounce her name, but I watched uh, Ayo Shirai in the Mae Young Classic, and she was badass. God, I hope she wins. Oh, she did. We've got a new champ. Ayo Shirai unseats Mandy Leon after so many defenses. She won with a nice tiger suplex. One of the reasons why I wish I could edit the names in this game is because her name is written in Japanese. And uh, 
You know, it, it makes it just that much harder to find. It's like Shinsuke Nakamura. My Shinsuke is written in Japanese too. There we go. New women's champ, finally. Finally. We got the belt off Mandy. Congratulations, Miss uh, Shirai. All right. As always, this show is amateur hour as fuck. I swear. And uh, I make you sit through the menu. I don't do the nice thing of editing all this out because, frankly, I lack the means to. I'm streaming straight from the PlayStation. This is the best I can do. So you got to deal with me setting up. Up next, we're going to do the Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Titles. That's the team of Pentagon and Phoenix. Real Life Brothers. Brothers, even. Um, always Yurkin Hall. Always Pauly Nerdic. Who do I have them? Oh. We have them face a team of legends. Last, last episode, which I think aired on Wednesday... Uh, you can find it on PlyNerk.com. Last episode, the team of Pentagon and Phoenix beat the legendary team of Jushin Thunder Liger and Tiger Mask. Today, they get Gato and... Who okay, was their second? Let's have a... Uh... Let's have big old bad luck Fale come out with them. And they're gonna get the Bullet Club OGs. Jado and Gato. Seconded by Bad Luck Fale against Pentagon and Ray Phoenix for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team title. This could be good. Uh, the match with um, Liger and Tiger versus Pentagon and Phoenix was pretty pretty damn good. I enjoyed it. And that's what I love about Fire Pro Wrestling World is that you get these creations off the internet and you, you put them in matches and you know, if the AI is done well, they, they the matches are real, real good. But please, if you're at all interested in this, make sure you tune in on uh, Tuesday for the uh, big reveal of the thing I teased during the podcast today. Also, listen to the podcast. Uh, it's available on polynark.com. You can find it on my Twitter feed. You can find it on my Facebook feed. All that stuff's polynerdic. It's the ordinary podcast. I record it every week, post it generally every Saturday morning. Sometimes we're a little late and it comes out in the evening. Uh, but 99% of the time it's out by 8 a.m. on uh, Saturday morning. Talked about it a little bit on this week's episode. Said what my plans are for this little show, this little Pioneer Pro Wrestling nonsense that I do. But Tuesday, you'll see all the details. It's going to be good fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Tons of fun. At least in my opinion. You may not be nearly as entertained as I am. I love these exchanges. If you watched uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling's King of Pro Wrestling event last week, you saw Jado Gato and Jay White join the Bullet Club OG faction. That's the Bullet Club faction that's not led by Kenny Omega. Um, they've kind of backed off the Civil War thing a little bit, which bums me out. Um, but I think... Um, but like they keep 
they keep having this like little war of war, war of words on Twitter, uh, Tama Tonga and Kenny Omega. So at some point, those two are gonna have to wrestle, and like I look forward to to seeing how that plays out. Stud, 3D style. I like that we get this fluorescent light tube in the ring that nobody's done anything with. It's just there. To admit though that I kind of view uh, Gato aligning himself with the Bullet Club OG, it kind of reminds me a lot of Eric Bischoff aligning himself with the NWO in the mid 90s. It's like it, it seems like the like just like a, I'm the Booker, I want to be in on the cool stuff. I don't know if I uh, said it already. This is going to be called Sunday Showdown for the title of this episode. Give up. Give up. Give up. Give up. Probably sometime tomorrow I'll uh, record the, uh, well, the day you're seeing this, uh, it'll be Sunday when you see this, so sometime today, as it were, uh, I'll probably be posting the playtest of Black Ops. Uh, that, for me, is real, real, real dependent on, you know, how busy the internet is. Ooh, that's close. Almost had new tag champs. Jado almost did it. Oh, that was a pretty cool move. I always love seeing that move. So close. Lucha Brothers almost had it. Jada's got a cross face. That's one thing I, I will admit I don't care for in this game is hear the, the noise of the crowd cheering. There's like that right there, that whistly sound. 
one of those doo -doo -doo -doo. That always kind of gets on my nerves. Damn, chopped the shit out of him. Oh, he's out the ring. I love that, uh, Folly is not doing anything. He's just out there. I think he'd be interfering. Cheating son of a bitch that he is. This is legal. Okay. Oh, nice stiff kick to the dick. Look at dick kick city stuff right there. I know he's back in Japan. I refuse to call Neville Pac. I hate that name. That's such a dumb name. He will always be Neville to me. He will continue to be Neville here in DNPW. Because I have him available for download. And of course I say that, but if the, uh, the fellow that I downloaded Neville from changes his name I guess I'm SOL but oh Canadian destroyer onto his brother's head hit him That flipping pile driver, man. That's just the wrong spot to go for a pin, man. Yeah, you gotta do that shit closer to your corner. downloading wrestlers as we speak. Guys that won't be on today's card. Alright, good job. Good job. Nice defense. Nice defense against the legends. Also bad guys. Oh, we got a big one here. This next, this next title. Next title match. Oh, bad luck Fale. Didn't do much to help out. Up next, old Big Rick. He's gonna defend his never open weight title. And he's gonna defend it against one of the baddest men on the planet. 
soon as I find him. Come on, I know you're in here. How far down did I? Way down, apparently. Okay, hold on. I wish they made it a little easier to alphabetize these two. There he is. Little Bobby Lashley. Little Bobby Lashley coming in here. He can't have a second, apparently. That's weird. Alright, so. Never open weight. Title. Champions Big Rick. Formerly known as Ezekiel Jackson. Going up against Bobby Lashley. Let's do this. It's match number three of 11. Dude, guys, get it, get on it. I wanted to have a uh, Leah Rush and last year's corner, but won't let me. Power slam there. Yeah. Whoever made Big Rick, they made him so painfully slow. It's actually pretty comical. Lashley's not that fast either though. Which is a little incorrect, because Lashley's pretty pretty quick fella. Like when uh WWE Raw was here in Cincinnati couple months back, June or July, whatever the hell that was. Uh, July, because it was in the lead up to SummerSlam. Uh, Bobby Lashley and Roman Reigns was the main event. You know, real, real crowd-pleasing main event there when Roman Reigns won. But they, uh, Lashley was quick. He's a big dude, but he's fast. kind of a breather match um, you know you gotta schedule these on occasion you can't have it all be boom 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 high action well you can if you're in New Japan that seems to be how their shows are booked but uh you gotta appeal to the American audience you know
would have been disappointed if Lashley tapped out of the torture rack. Come on, Lashley. Pull it for you here. Although I do need to move you over to the heel side since you're apparently a heel now. out just like he did Tai Chi I did not expect that Big Rick remains the never open weight champion I have a feeling he's gonna be hard to get the belt off of that belt's not coming off easy you get it quick too less than 10 minutes I think we're going to have to do a match with no crits on Big Rick. Alright, next up. Just keep on moving. IWGP Tag Team. Killer Elite Squad, Davey Boy Smith Jr. and Lance Archer. They're going to face the Chaos Team of... Tomohiro Ishii. Stone Pitbull. Absolute badass. And Sheldon Benjamin, of all people. Let's see. Give him something that goes good with Ishii's attire. Go with that one. That's a good looking pair right there. Actually let's make let's get a second here. Let's have Let's have Okada himself come out with him. And Rainmaker. Not that seconds do anything, but it's always fun to have them out there, I think. Alright, tag team titles. That's the teams. There we go. Let's get into it. Working on multiple things here. Ishii's a badass. If you haven't seen it yet, you should definitely check out Ishii versus Omega during the G1. That match was amazing. And more recently, his title yeah. defense against Ishii was pretty damn good, too. Still kind of, kind of in awe, a little shocked, a little stunned silence there of uh, Big Rick knocking out Bobby Lashley. You know, Tai Chi made sense because he's so much bigger than Tai Chi. But uh, Lashley is a man on his level. Double close line there. Killer Elite Squad. That's another another uh, champ that's uh, proven really hard to beat.
choke slam by Lance. I still don't think Lance is tall enough, but. Get him, Ishii. Oh, well, don't get him. Get got. Oh, he just stole Shelton's suplex. Lazy cover, though. Some of the wrestlers end up with weird hip placement. Look at Shelton's hips. Like, something about the way his stance is and the way his hips line up. His legs go into the sockets. Looks a little weird. Only a one count, damn. The proper killer elite bomb. Yeah, the full Nelson Indo power bomb. YouTube. I don't want the new studio. Stop changing shit, YouTube. I want my studio the way it was before. The new YouTube studio sucks. Like, looks like it would be fantastic if, you know, you, yeah, you had yourself a channel that, uh, was, you know, regularly viewed. Yeah, these tools would be fantastic for a, you know, a bigger channel that people watch a lot of. My channel is not that. Yeah, like videos I posted a couple weeks ago and I made them public just now shouldn't pop up as brand new videos just now. They should just stay in their timeline.
Well, the three previous installments of Fly Nerd Pro Wrestling are now available on the YouTube channel. Oh, shit. Ishii tapped. Shelton tried to break it up. This is hair too late. Well, 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 well. Another title down. With the exception of a uh, first match, the champs have been holding on. I'm actually surprised by that one. I figured the team of Benjamin and Ishii would be enough to take down Smith and Archer. This card's moving right along, though. IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion's up next. We're going to do the thing that we should have got a couple months ago, but instead we got a six-man tag. Oh, he's right there. Rey Mysterio versus Marty Scroll. Let's see what Mysterio attire we got here. What do Mysterio and his Wolverine looking attire from All In? All right, so we got Rey Mysterio versus Marty Scroll, IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team or Junior Heavyweight Title. Next card's getting kind of interesting. When you look at the people involved here. As I said, the next uh, card after this one will be a special one. It'll just be six matches, all contested under triple threat elimination rules. I'm very much looking forward to filming that one. That was going to be a lot of fun. Uh, the card should be relatively shorter, too, since it's five less matches. figure out who's gonna go after Killer Lee Squad next now. All the teams I put up against them, they take down. And they are multi-time defenders. I think they've surpassed uh, Mandy Leone now as far as uh, title defenses. That's a pretty good approximation of the, uh, the Wolverine suit that Ray wore it all in. The creation tools that they have in this game are amazing. I just wish I was patient enough to do shit with them. Because I'm not.
Marty Scroll versus Rey Mysterio would be a hell of a match. Even with Mysterio being, you know, the veteran that he is. Now, if you can get Mysterio in his prime against Marty, my god, that would be good. Insulting slap there to the back of the head. Give up. Give up. Give up. That's a hell of a move. Nicely done, Ray. Ah, uh, six one nine. Cradle pin. Not quite there yet. Pretty close though. Must call it a cruiserweight belt. Wrong company. That's a little better than seventy-seven percent, I think. Of course, CPU is always the person that is the username because I'm not actually playing. All right, this is interesting. This next matchup's one of my created belts. I say it every time we do it. It's the mixed tag belt, but it's really the intergender belt, but intergender tag team doesn't fit in the limited space that Fire Pro gives you to, uh, to do that. We're gonna go for a power couple that's no longer in wrestling, but, uh, you know, everybody loves just the same. I should create Colt Cabana and let him and Punk fight it out in a landmine death match. There we go. Intergender mixed tag, whatever you want to call it. CM Punk, AJ Lee. Versus the reigning and defending champs, Michael Elgin and Jordan Grace. Let's see if the uh, the married couple has what it takes to unseat the champs. Although, I hate to do this, you know, mid-match and all, but uh, nature is calling. So enjoy this match commentary free for a little bit while I go use the restroom.
Apologies for having to bail mid match like that, but uh, you know, nature calls, and I'm not sitting ringside in an arena. I, I have the liberty to get up and use the restroom. Sue me. I saw Big Mike get busted open just as I was leaving the room. That was very early in the match that that happened. see what Punk did, but I I turned and looked and Elgin was bleeding. Give up. Give up. Cracks me up the number of people that make perverted ass ring mats. So that way you can have a half naked lady for the for the wrestlers to roll around on top of. Oh, go to sleep. I nailed it. Hey Jay, what are we sleep at the ropes? Sleep on George. Oh, so close. Hunk almost had it. AJ has bows on her socks, is that what I'm saying? of ice on Gordon. Give up. Give up. We finally have a team Give strong up. enough to unseat the champs. on the turnbuckle. Just kick him in the ass. Ah, uh, Punk missed the elbow drop. Elgin with the centaur. What was that from AJ? Well, 
Why are you tagging out, punk? You had it. We're gonna let, let AJ take on Elgin. Now, see for this again with the height thing. I don't believe AJ Lee is almost the same height as Mike Elgin. I just don't buy that for a second. She's another one whose hips don't line up right. Just like uh, Shelton Benjamin's. Yeah. Ah, shit, Elgin Bomb. In the corner, though, we're alright. He's a great. Stopped on his lower back butt area. Pretty sure she might have had him there. If she'd just gone for the bin. We got ourselves a new tag champ. That would have been a pinfall there. I think as tiny as AJ is, oh Mike probably take her head off with a clothesline. Trigger. That's a good move for Punk and AJ to do together. Golden Trigger. Didn't even illegal man. Uh, I think she was going for a northern lights there, couldn't get it. Elgin definitely won that exchange. I'm still spacing out again. My apologies. I think I got another three hours or so in me, and I gotta go to bed. Three hours will put me at a uh, thirty hours. Just unbeatable. 
I thought Punk and AJ had him. I thought Punk and AJ had him. They look close a number of times. More champs are successfully defending than not. We've only had the two title changes. Alright, back to the uh, singles matches. Goto. I keep forgetting he's the original champion here. I'm going to put him up with Daniel Bryan. How's that sound? Goto versus the GOAT, I guess. Uh, for the IWGP United States Championship. Not going to waste any time. Just going to dive right in. even better than uh, you know Mandy Leone was because Mandy Leone was the second champ. Goto's the original champ. He's up there with the Killer Elite Squad as far as just people that won the belt and have not dropped it. That's the only thing about Daniel Bryan re-signing or staying signed with the WWE is that uh, you lose all the possible possible matches he could have had. I don't like the new YouTube studio. It's a mess. Give up. Give up. Give up. Let's say if Brian submits in less than 10 minutes, that'd be sad. It's like that uh, Miz versus Daniel Bryan match from the Super Showdown. Give up. Give up. 
Man, Jojo's just like laying in the submissions. Just one after the other after the other. He's determined to make Brian tap. Really, Brian? That'll show him. Angle slammed onto the apron. You know, as they like to remind us, that's the hardest part of the ring. Give up. Give up. Man. Give up. This is a much more submission heavy match than Give I thought up. it would be. I mean, I'm not surprised Give that up. Brian's busting him out, but. Jojo's reliance on him was uh, a little shocking. Every other match I've watched him wrestle, he's been more of a power guy. Ooh. That fucking hurt. Bad guy right at you and kick you in the face and chest. GTR. Nope, nope. Give up. Brian slipped Give into up. the cross face. Yes, lock. Look at the exchange going. He's going to win. Call the draw. He's in the ropes. Good job, referee version of me. What was that? Is this supposed to be his running knee strike? Because it looks more like he's hitting him with his ass. version of the yes kick. It's a single kick to the face. Thought Brian had it. It was a quality match they're putting on here. Damn. Running knee to the face. So it is unstoppable too. Hiroki, Hiroki Goto winning another one. All right, we're into the home stretch here. We got four more matches. We 
not to change match type here. I have to get this next one in. Back one screen. You know what time it is. Whenever we get to this time of the time of the night, time for the landmine death match for the hardcore title. Sato Tanaka tearing it up as champ. We're giving, giving an unexpected opponent this time. One of the last people you expect. Maybe. Maybe maybe Toro Yano got will get it. Maybe he'll uh he'll uh unseat the champ. Who knows? Stranger things have happened. Masato Tanaka is a tough son of a bitch though. He was one of the first Japanese wrestlers. Him, Chono, and Muda were like two of the or three of the first Japanese wrestlers I ever really got into growing up. As I said earlier, this match will, or this title won't be defended on the uh, Triple Threat show because uh, I can't do Triple Threats in this style. They end up being handicap matches. I've said it before in other shows, but I wish, I really wish Fire Pro let you have just a little more control of your match types. A vicious knee to the face. I don't think Masada Tanaka ever... I don't think he ever wrestled in New Japan. Just take a look at that memory lane. While he uh, massages Toro's belly. Oh, first taste of the landmines. Yano's bleeding. No surprise there after falling on the landmine and the barbed wire. Does not look like Give up. Give up. Give up. Give up. Yeah, it doesn't look like he ever uh Oh no, nope, he did. He did in mid two thousand nine. He returned to New Japan Pro Wrestling as an outsider. He teamed with Jado and Gato, who we saw earlier tonight. And he participated in the 2009 G1 Climax Tournament. Uh, New Japan, he's an ally of the stable Chaos. It's funny when you read this, because it says in New Japan, he's an ally of the stable Chaos. Especially Jado, Gato, and Yujiro Takahashi. Uh, Jado and Gato just joined Bullet Club OG. And Takahashi is a member of the elite. Before Shelton Benjamin was part of Chaos when he was in New Japan. Damn, I'm not down with my uh, 
Masato Tanaka history. Every one of these title matches, he's won with the foot on the chest. Uh, he tore it up in New Japan in the late aughts, early this decade. He was the uh, inaugural Never Openweight Champion. He was the second IWGP Intercontinental Champion. He certainly belongs in New Japan. I, I didn't realize he, he spent time in New Japan. Uh, 65, really? Well, I guess, yeah. Fair enough. That wasn't the greatest match. It was just vicious and bloody, and he, he kind of dominated. He kind of dominated him a little bit there. I got him in the wrong faction. Shelton Benjamin's a member of Suzuki Goon, not Chaos. I gotta fix that. That's that's uns upsetting. All right. So now we got to uh, return to the menu here so we can move on to the next match. Back to the regular matches. We're going to do the never open weight six man tag titles now. That's the Dudley boys. Dudley's got those belts. They're going to go up against the Bullet Club Elite team of Carl Anderson. Lou Gallows. And we're going to throw Hangman Page in the group here. Let's get on it. We got two more matches after this one, and the card will be complete. Sorry, I fell down a rabbit hole with uh, reading up about uh, various betrayals and whatnot in New Japan. You know, the way people joined the GBH stable, which splintered and became part of it became Chaos, and then, you know, uh, people from Chaos left and joined Suzuki here, and it is crazy. I gotta fix my stables after this uh, show's over, though. Put Shelton Benjamin in the right faction. 
Even though technically, I guess right now he's a WWE guy, he should be over there. <laughs> to hell, he ran right through. It's a decent Hangman page, but again, he's got the leg issue that that Shelton Benjamin had. Where the legs meet the, the torso, they look weird. Not enough spike, not enough. Yeah. Power bomb neckbreaker combo. It's like, you know, Gallows and Anderson are technically WWE guys, but they, they belong in the Bullet Club. Although I guess it's completely arbitrary since I keep Finn Balor. I keep him as Finn Balor in the WWE's. Uh, grouping, but then I got Gallows and Anderson over here with Bullet Club. Yeah, why are you pinning him? I mean, it's too early for that for one, but you're pinning him right in his own corner. This game had a rival system where you could uh, assign rivals like these guys are rivals with these guys, kind of thing. Because that'll make that would make the run-ins more sensical. Because way back on the first show, we had a uh, Sting run in on a junior heavyweight title match, and it, it, it made no sense because he's got no beef really with either guy. Shining Wizard. Don't let him run away. Just Spike just throwing fucking gallows down to the ground. for the Bullet Club. I like the Elite. Probably Eagles yet. Speaking of 
Bullet Club. New member for the uh, OG faction. Ishimori's tag team partner. I'll be damned if Japanese, Japanese names don't sound so fucking cool. Taiji Ishimori. Tomohiro Ishii. Those are badass names. English names. Floyd. Tomohiro is a much cooler name than Floyd. Or Bruce. Someone made the McAllisters, the Highlander tag team. I mean, Jesse and Festus, too. And Husky Harris. Man, this guy, this guy like, like to make interesting stuff. Oz, uh, Kevin Ash's old. This guy made some ruthless aggression era wrestlers. Deuce, Domino. McAllister's, Kazarni. Subscribing like crazy. Getting ourselves some new tag teams. Take on the Killer Elite Squad. the guy I was looking for, but I found some other guys to add to the roster. I like that these shows always end up being just, just about two hours long. Probably longer than most people want to watch video game wrestling, but I'm having fun with it, so... Oh, uh, shit. Doomsday device, sort of. I love the idea of Spike Dudley picking Hangman Page up on his shoulders, though. Come on, take him out, Hangman. Slam with a bridging pin. Almost had it, I think. I 
love that so much when that happens. When I see it, eh? Oh! Gut punched him? That was a, a move of his to steal? Wasn't the most effective move to steal, Paige. What the fuck just happened? Bodies flying everywhere. Three D on the on the page and spikes backs. Cutter by Spike. Dudley's gonna win. Is that what we're gonna see? We're gonna see the Dudleys win the belts or defend the belts. The second time in four shows that Gallows and Anderson have had a tag team title match of some sort. Who's legal? Devon? No. Devon and Carl. Neckbreaker. I said it a couple episodes back, but anytime the bell rings when someone gets hit in the balls will always make me laugh. It's something about the combination of that sound effect and then the attack itself. I think, I think Gal is more likely to do a big boot on a standing sidekick. Doesn't look very much like a Doc Gallows kind of move. Luke Gallows kind of move. Just keeps taking that Russian leg sweep. hit his finisher not towards the corner so that way we can see a pinfall not that I have a bias or anything but I'd like to see these belts find their way to the bullet club what the hell was that
It makes me sad how poorly utilized Gals and Anderson are. I mean, more power to them for getting a paycheck for doing nothing, but not tearing up their bodies or anything, but they're such a good tag team in New Japan. WWE just doesn't know what to do with their people. Chair shots going on behind you, ref. Sometimes just whooping. Oh, kind of on the chair. I count it. I count it as a, a power bomb onto the chair. I'll pretend like it did more damage. Killer. Yep. I'm seeing 3Ds and magic killers and all sorts of stuff in this match. See, it sounds like it right registers that they're landing on the chairs. Let him grapple you. Grapple him. Teams are much more evenly matched than I expected. A little while since we had a match go 40 minutes. There we go. Well, we didn't quite get 40 minutes, but came awfully damn close. I'll accept it. That was a good match. Well, I like that one. But Bullet Club teams just aren't set to win. Ever. When they tag. You know, the Young Bucks and Scroll, they lost to the Shield. Gallus and Anderson lost to Killer Elite Squad. Now Gallus and Anderson and Page lost to the Dudleys. Alright, we're going to do the Intercontinental title. We're going to have a rematch from the last show. Nido's going to go up against Muda again. But we're going to play with the settings this time. No DQ. No count. Do normal run ends. I'd make it false count anywhere if I could, but they don't have that as an option. Because last time these two fought over the Intercontinental title, the match was going real good, and then Naito got counted out. Like Muda did a sneaky heel thing and got Naito counted out. So we're doing no count outs this time. No count outs, no DQs. Essentially, this is a no holds barred match. Although, already we've seen Muda use forks and spit mist in people's faces, so it's already kind of no holds bar. But the difference is this time there won't be any count outs. Fight. I want an actual winner.
because Naito, I believe, was on the cusp of winning the belt when he got counted out. Shit, already going for the mist. Minute into the match. This is the penultimate match, by the way, and the main event's up next. Random full Nelson. Haven't seen that in a while. Since uh, Chris Masters left the WWE. Give up. Oh, cry chop. I don't know anything about the Shingo fella that uh, joined LIJ at King of Pro Wrestling. I was really hoping it was going to be Neville Pac, if you will. Not that Neville fits LIJ's setup, but. It would have been a nice change of pace. Here comes the fork. What a bleeding Nido. Oh, he missed it him. So he forked him and then spit in his face. I think Muda's becoming another one of those guys that just doesn't lose. Blood all over the place, ruining my nice clean ring. Samuda with the moon salt. Well, it doesn't get much more decisive than that. Does not get more decisive than that. Muda wins again. This is just not Naito's day. That belt's not his to have. It's a shame. I was looking forward to seeing Naito with that belt. He came so close last time, in my opinion. It looked like it was a, a lock that he was going to... Uh... 
winner if I took away count outs. That'll bring us to our main event. If you recall the last episode, if you watched it, uh, that uh, Cody Rhodes upset Kenny Omega in a three-way with Koto uh, Ibushi, just like what they really did at King of Pro Wrestling. But, uh, you know, and King of Pro Wrestling, Omega won. Well, AJ here won the right via tournament. I did a round-robin tournament at 400 times speed the other day to determine my number one contender for this match. And here we go. IWGP heavyweight title. AJ Styles versus Cody Rhodes. Or Cody, as it were. The American Nightmare. It's our main event. to a slower start than I expected. They're moving like a snail's pace. Phenomenal forearm in the corner. They used to put on a hell of a match in real life. Give up. Give up. Give up. Give up. Yeah, I really bet. AJ and Cody could have a hell of a fight. Hell of a show. Cody's looking impressive. I thought AJ would walk away with this, but I've been wrong almost every every fucking match tonight. So. Give up. Give up. 
That would have been crazy if they would have put the IWGP heavyweight title on Cody. Since he's got the NWA World Heavyweight title and the US title. Drop my phone down into the couch. Oh, she just split Cody open the hard way with a punch. It's a Brock Lesnar move, AJ. Had enough of Cody's shit. with a roll up that would have been something else that's exactly how he won the title you get a little sneaky roll up in in the midst of the triple threat and AJ does the same cross body Your move. That's your move. Or, uh... immediately to the calf crusher. I did not expect that. Just like that, new champ. AJ Styles got the IWGP title back around his waist. Throwback to his time in New Japan. New champion. Well, Cody's reign was short, short lived. Good new champ. That belt around AJ's waist. And that's going to do it for this episode. It's another 11 matches, just like that. Time flies during these shows. Uh, keep your eyes peeled later in the week. Going to do another show, a little shorter show. It's going to be just the singles titles going to be triple th triple threat themed uh, elimination style all the matches all six singles titles with the exception of the hardcore title also plynerc.com around noon on Tuesday I've got an announcement set to drop for another plan I have to do with this fine little program we're putting together with Fire Pro um, it's just a little thing I planned that it'll, it'll take several installments to do, but it's, you know, it's uh, a very New Japan style thing to do. So, details will drop on Tuesday. Now, you can get a little hint of it if you listen to the Ordinary Podcast that posted on Pinerk.com 
earlier this morning, or Saturday morning, as it were, um, since this is going up on YouTube tomorrow on Sunday. This weekend, in other words, I'm very tired. Um, check out the podcast, talked about what my plans are without going into great detail. The, the detailed announcement comes Tuesday on Pinearth.com. Um, see you next time, though. I'm going to sign off for a little while. Um, thinking about going to bed. I might stay up for just a little bit longer, though. But uh, this this will go up Sunday afternoon. And uh, see, see you next time.